Hey Wargamers, today I want to talk about the Swarmlord and the new Tyranids Codex. Now, the Swarmlord is probably my favorite model in the Tyranid army. Uh, it's the reason why I started playing Tyranids in the first place. It just represents everything that is awesome about the Hive Fleet. Um, I mean, come on, look at that. That's awesome. So, uh, you really can't complain about anything about the Swarmlord, and if you do, um, you should just not, not play. <laughs> uh, yeah, all kidding aside, the Swarmlord is a very good choice in the new Codex. It has some strengths, it also has some notable weaknesses, and that's what we'll talk about today. So let's dive in and uh, start with the profile and then we'll work our way out. But notably, there is a fair amount of flexibility built into the Swarmlord, not in terms of its options, it doesn't have any options for war gear, but it does have a lot of important choices you have to make ahead of the battle in terms of how you're going to deploy him and uh, what types of psychic traits and everything like that he's going to have. So he is flexible. Don't let anyone say that he's not. All right. So the Swarm Lord, he has uh, variable movement starting at 9, weapon skill 2, ballistic skill 3 up, uh, variable strength starting at 8, uh, toughness 7, 12 wounds, variable attacks starting at 6, uh, 10 leadership, and a 3 up save. So uh, right away you should know that the Tyranid Swarm Lord is a close combat beast, and that's before we even get to start talking about his weapons, which are bone sabers. Um, he has um, Bone Sabers, which are Strength User. So again, starting at 6, which isn't great, but it's still pretty good. Um, AP minus 3 and 3 damage a piece, And that's where it really brings the pain. Uh, that minus 3 AP at a flat 3 damage a piece is very nice. Um, it's a consistent and reliable source of damage at a high AP. And that's the type of damage that brings down Primarchs, that brings down Titans, explodes vehicles, and just wrecks face. So... Yeah, that's pretty good on its own, but then if you make a wound roll of six or more, you get an additional mortal wound. And that's important because it also, you know, aside from just doing more damage, it allows the Swarm Lord an ability to deal with um, higher model count units. You know, having those, you know, minus three AP, three damage a piece really doesn't mean anything against a bunch of tactical marines but if you have those mortal wounds that you're generating that's another way to basically expand the footprint of the swarm lord to affect a larger number of models because mortal wounds do spill over so yeah so that's pretty darn good um he has a prehensile pincer tail as well you get to make an additional attack with this this is not an ap um not an ap attack but it is d3 damage um so that's just like a little a little, you know, cherry on top, a little of the accoutrement uh, for his uh, attack dish. He's just putting that out there. Uh, works out pretty nicely. He has the Shadow and the Warp and Synapse special rules, as you would expect. Um, his Psychic Barrier gives him a 4 up and vulnerable save uh, against range attacks. And then Blade Parry increases that by 1 for close combat. So in close combat, he has a 3 up and vulnerable save. And uh, that's not a very common save to have. Having three up in vulnerable save uh, is pretty uh, uncommon and pretty good. So being able to reliably shrug off wounds uh, on a three up is, is you know, valuable, especially for such a high priority target. One of the biggest weaknesses for Swarm Lord is that he is a character that is above 10 wounds, and so he's able to be picked off fairly easily if uh, you leave him out in the open. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but uh, being able to shrug off wounds is is a critical component of deploying Swarm Lord effectively, and having that three up and vulnerable save really does help him do that. Um, he has the Will of the Hive Mind uh, special rule that increases his synapse range to 18 inches. So again, uh, making him valuable not only as a individual, but supporting your army as a whole, just like other Hive Tyrants, but this is a Swarm Lord, so, uh, <laughs> you know, he's going to be up close and personal and giving that um, synapse coverage to all your units in combat because, you know, in the, le the most likely circumstances that you're going to have um, most of your close combat somewhere around the Swarm Lord. You're not going to deploy him uh, out in the corner of the board away from everyone else um, and have, have everything else completely far away from him. This is going to be important 
uh, to keep him as an effective anchor to the rest of your combat units. Uh, and then finally he has the death row special rule, basically uh, allows him to explode when he dies, but most importantly he has the hive commander special rule. And this allows you to select another tyranid unit um, or the swarm lord himself uh, in the shooting phase and allow them to move again. Um, and this again is another important part of the flexibility that I talked about, um, being able to either have him move twice in one turn to get into close combat and actually do some damage is uh, critical, or you can use this to slingshot another unit across the board. You know, maybe Gene Stealers. Maybe Gene Stealers uh, would be a really good choice because, again, Gene Stealers can uh, advance and charge in the same turn. And so being able to move, advance, move, advance, and then charge with Gene Stealers is really nice. Um, and so in either of those situations, whether you're using on the Swarm Lord himself or in a, or on Gene Stealers, uh, gives you a really good offensive ability. Similarly, using this on a unit of Termagants or something else allows you some nice defensive ability or tactical options in terms of capturing objectives. So the flexibility associated with the Hive Commander special ability really is kind of the, a, a top tier ability. And if you are a commander that's you know really thinking about, about where things need to be and where they need to go, if you're focused on the movement phase, then having the Hive Commander ability can be very deadly. So the Swarm Lord can have two additional psychic powers beyond Smite. He can deny two and he can cast two. Um, as far as which abilities he should, or which psychic powers he should bring, uh, I definitely think Catalyst is one of the top choices because he is going to be targeted extensively. And so being able to guarantee that he has access to Catalyst and being able to uh, give himself that five plus feel no pain is essential. The other strong option in my opinion is taking Onslaught. It works well with Hive Commander and it can really allow some extra uh, flexibility in getting him and other units into combat. Now there is also a very good argument for um, a lot of the other <laughs> psychic powers. A lot of the Tyranid psychic powers are very good, uh, but especially with the changes to how Smite works in Chapter Approved, um, or rather the beta rules for, for how Smite works, it looks like Psychic Scream is also a very good option because you don't suffer the deteriorating um, or the, the increased cost of casting Psychic Scream uh, that you do for casting Smite. So instead of casting Smite, you can cast Psychic Scream and uh, you're in a good boat there. So one of the biggest questions with the Swarm Lord now is how do you deploy it? In the past, it was essentially required that you bring him in a Tyrannocyte, but now he has the option to uh, be deployed using the Alien Cunning Warlord trait that basically allows him to be deployed and then redeployed uh, before the start of the game. And you can do some tricksy stuff with this. You can deploy him you know, on one side of the board and then move him to the other side of the board where he's out of uh, line of sight or out of range of certain targets, uh, basically tricking your opponent to misdeploy or you know, uh, put their heavy firepower in a position where uh, they are not actually going to be able to use it. And so having the alien cunning special or special rule or warlord trait is actually fairly good if you don't want to bring a tyrannocyte but i still think the tyrannocyte is the better way to go uh you know you're you're not going to be able to get the swarm lord across the board as quickly on foot as you can on a tyrannocyte and using hive commander uh on himself after coming out of a tyrannocyte can get him in combat turn one and that's that's really where he's he's going to be the most effective is being this aggressive unit. Um, he is close combat oriented, and so you want him to be in close combat. You don't want him kind of hanging around, hiding behind buildings and stuff like that. He's just not going to be worth his points at that point. So uh, put him in a transite, deep strike him, have him run in, uh, and have fun. Um, now, you know there is there is the component of, of being able to slingshot gene stealers across the board, and that's. Um, that's something that you could do if you put him on foot, but I still think you're going to get more bang for your buck if you put him in a Tyrannocyte. Um, yeah, so there's that. Um, additionally, you have the question of which high fleet is he best suited for. 
really I do think Kraken is the best choice for him, and that's because he can utilize that to get to places where he needs to be. If he's stuck in combat with, you know, a single tactical marine, get him out of there. He's not you don't need to have him kill that marine. You can get him in a combat with a, a whole nother juicy squad somewhere else using the Kraken uh the Kraken high fleet trait. And so for that reason, I really do think that he's he's best suited for Kraken. You could make an argument for Behemoth, but if you're putting him in a Tranis or yeah, in a in a Tranosite, uh he's really he's probably not gonna need that because the Tranosite will be nine inches away. He'll high fleet or hive commander himself, get up nice and close, and there's no way he's gonna fail that charge. So I mean you could fail the charge, but let's uh let's hope that you don't. So <laughs> Um, yeah, just give him that, that Kraken special uh, ability really does uh, let him be more fluid in the long term. And uh, that's really where he's going to shine. So I think Kraken's a good choice. Behemoth is, an, is another good option, but really uh, Kraken is where you're going to want to be. Um, and then finally, the, the last point I want to make is he's really expensive, especially if you bring that Tyrannocyte. He's, he's fairly expensive and for about the same cost you can get two flying hive tyrants which uh, you know have the ability to put a lot more um, attacks there are a lot more wounds more synapse coverage that sort of thing um, more psychic powers and so it can be very tempting to uh, take uh, two hive two flying hive tyrants instead of a single swarm lord but you know, I think it really depends on your army composition as to which of those two options is better. If you're going for a strict close combat theme, tons of gene stealers, whatever, um, the Swarm Lord is going to be the stronger choice because a lot of the time when you're going for a close combat army, you want to go all in. You don't really want to, you know, straddle that fence in terms of, you know, are you close combat? Are you shooting oriented? Are you a mix? If you're going close combat, you have to go all in. And so the Swarm Lord is going to not only be another close combat element in your army, but he's going to synergize strongly with your other close combat uh, units. He's going to make them better. You're going to be more effective overall. And so um, having him in a close combat oriented army makes sense. If you are going more shooty, though, I really do think that bring two flying hive tyrants is the way to go. Or if you're playing a really small game and you know you don't really have the points for for as large of an investment as you need to make the Swarm Lord viable, go with the Hive Tyrants instead. They're going to be flexible. They're going to, you know, A, be fast, which is really important, but also give you some nice options with shooting and uh, just be a general good option. So for that reason, if you're going close combat, bring the Swarm Lord. If you're not, if you're doing anything other than 100% close combat, you know, go with the Hive Tyrants instead. So Hope you guys like this video. Uh, Swarm Lord is awesome. I really don't think that you can go um, wrong bringing him in a close combat army. He is a beast. It's really hard to kill him once you get uh, in close combat and get Catalyst up and uh, you know work your magic because he can he can get in there and and really tear guys up. So uh, of course. Uh, Smart deployment is critical to that too. Don't don't drop him uh, in front of a gun line and, and expect him to live. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you using Swarm Lord to uh, to really just destroy your enemy, or are you putting him out there and he's just dying right away? Either way, let me know. And of course, happy war gaming. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to thank all my patrons over on Patreon. Uh, your support really makes a difference for me and I really appreciate it. Uh, special thanks goes out to No Excuse Panda, Paul Luters, Tao Oswell, Andy Young, Peter Benjamin Parker, Deverson, and Giovanni DiMaggio. Uh, you guys rock, thank you. If you liked this video particularly well, uh, head on over to Patreon and consider joining our community over there. Thanks as always and happy wargaming.